This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is sponsored by ArtBase. Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or a gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? We think so. Well, ArtBase is the right software to manage your art business. ArtBase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. You just enter your data once and use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com now to learn more and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount. Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. One of the great things about social media is the incredible amount of content that's free for consumers. And when we think about the art world, social media provides us with an opportunity to experience art remotely, and it also is a platform where we can learn valuable information about artists, artworks, galleries, auctions, and many other things. This can come from other users or artists directly, creating content for their audiences. Interestingly, artists and content creators haven't monetized these platforms, and their audiences certainly appreciate the free content. I do think, though, that patronage will become an increasing form of compensation for content creators and artists for their content online. Given this interesting trend, we wanted to have Cosman N.A. on the podcast. He's the founder and CEO of Contribute2, a tool that lets people pay artists, creatives, and creators for the work they enjoy seeing online. And as a part of this, Art Tactic has actually created a Contribute2 card. Over the past 12 years, the Art Tactic Podcast has grown to be a leading art market podcast. Each week, we share an exclusive in-depth interview with a key art world insider. And as we move into a new phase of programming, we want our broadcast to be listener-supported and create content that you want to hear, not what we think you want to hear. So you can support the podcast by visiting contribute.to slash art tactic. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and thanks so much for listening. Osman, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Adam, for having me. Absolutely. So I think social media, especially Instagram, has really transformed the art world in several ways. And when we think about artists and the content they create and share on social media, it's interesting to think about the ways in which they're compensated or not compensated for this. So on that note, tell us what exactly is Contribute To and how does it work? So Contribute To is a new way for artists to fund their passions. As you said before, it's a simple tool that lets people pay artists for the work they enjoy seeing online. Um, And how it works is that artists create a personalized link like Contribute To slash Art Tactic and share this link on social media and with their network by using, let's say, iMessage, WhatsApp, newsletters. Essentially, they carry the link wherever they meet their audience. The link launches a contribute card, which enables people to make a contribution. And so we added then some magic by providing matching. So contributions made to some artists are matched by patrons from our network, who essentially double people's contributions to the artists. And what I think is important to mention is that this is not another social media platform. It's a creative business card that just allows people to fuel their passions um, we were thinking, you know, Silicon Valley gave us social media, so we thought, let's start making some money off of it. So the goal with Contribute2 is to create a tool that allows consumers to show their appreciation directly to artists and to leverage existing social media um, platforms. So who's behind Contribute2? Tell us a little bit more about your background and yourself, and I'd love it if you could dig a little deeper into this matching uh, component of the contributions that you mentioned. So I co-founded this with an inspiring Swiss art collector and entrepreneur, um, Nicola Ernie, and we built Contribute2 during lockdown with a team that has never met in person. We then did some early testing in December, launched in beta earlier this year, and we will increasingly open up over the next few months. And regarding the matching, uh, this is not just another way of providing um, support to people, but this is, in my opinion, another way of providing patronage to the arts. 
it hasn't really changed since the Medici, but you know, no wonder they didn't have iPhones and mm -hmm. social media, but now we do. So just like the Medici, I think there are a lot of people out there who would want to support the arts, but don't have a way to do that in a, in a simple and transparent way. Yeah. We came up with this idea of matching, uh, by you know by by providing a matching to contributions made by other people so this means that artists work to earn the matching if you want and by by doing that everybody's money goes further the contributor is happy because the matcher is doubling their money the ma matching patron is happy because they have supported artists and the arts and they have transparency into where the money goes I just believe that getting consumers to make the first step and put in the first contribution dollars it is what's needed in order to trigger matching by a patron and, and make it attractive for everybody who is a patron today. And so you said you came up with the idea for Contribute to during the pandemic. What motivated you to launch the tool? So there were two events which came together and led to the creation of Contribute to. Um, first, I my fundamental conviction that if, if the internet had an original sin, uh, it would be that it promoted the false belief that everything is free, which uh, it certainly isn't. So you get the content for free, but you give up on your privacy and Silicon Valley is making a ton of money off of that. So we wondered, and I wondered, what if there was another way? Uh, what if you could contribute to people, causes, content, or in, even institutions, if you like, to show your appreciation, but on your terms. No data giveaways and, and no privacy breaches. And the second event was that I've, I've spent 10 years working on payment models. And when COVID has just started to spread, we saw all the grants popping up as um, one-time funds to support artists without any longevity. And we worried about how artists can sustain themselves outside of the traditional uh, models uh, which all got shut down. And so Nicola Ernie and, and I came up with the idea of Contribute to as a super simple way for artists to uh, share their work with the option to get a voluntary payment should someone want to support them. So both together motivated me to, uh, to start this. And so people who have already made contributions or who are thinking about making contributions, what would you say they get in return for these contributions? Well, um, they are, they're getting uh, the, the artist's work in return. So artists, and that, that's a very interesting question to ask, uh, because artists already did their work, and we already experienced the value of their work. Like, we enjoy their, their content on, on Instagram, on, on, on YouTube, and, on, you know, on all the social media platforms that, that we are um, on all the time. So we get entertained by this content. And as consumers, we can now show our appreciation with a contribution. And no, you're not getting something in return for, the, for, for your contributions for now. And there's a reason behind that. My intent in the beginning was to build a tool that enables people to give back and to close that very important loop to the value that they have already experienced on social. So think about it, during this pandemic, what did most people do to compensate for the lack of cultural activity in real life? Like, what is at the bottom of the economic pile that our entire, our entire society runs on? It's arts and culture, even more so than sports and other stuff that was not possible during this pandemic. So what did we do? We turned to arts and creativity online. Artists kept making art, but there was no Wimbledon. So the value exchange between sharing what you have already created, especially on social, and receiving something in return was incomplete. It felt to me a little bit like, you know, let's say, baking pancakes and serving them outside your house to everyone who is passing by without being paid for your efforts. And so I wanted, I wanted to test this hypothesis. Uh, that's why I built this very pure and, and simple contributions tool because we wanted to see if you share your creative work online and tell people what you're passionate about, what gets you out of bed in the morning, would they consider making a contribution after enjoying something? And the answer is yes. So 
in order to test that, uh, we needed to, to stay pure. And that's why you're not getting something in return for contribution. And so if we take a step back and look at social media and really how it's transformed society and more specifically to the arts, it's really had a major impact on how the art market and the art world operates. How has social media transformed how creators such as artists engage with their audiences and consequently provide content to them for free? Well, that's an interesting one. Where social media is amazing is that it has removed the gatekeepers. And, and it has turned the whole web into a gallery space. Every artist can now speak on, uh, you know, on their own to an interested audience, to their fans, to collectors directly. And artists can show their work. They can explain the process of making it. They can tell everybody why a specific artwork is important to them. They can take the audience on a journey from the moment they start working on something to completing that work all things that were not possible before. So everything that I just cited, people now get for free. Why? Like th this, is, this is stuff that used to be in the books and we paid to consume. Uh, and that was before social. You could say that social media has democratized access to art. The, going back in, in time, if you, if you wanted to see Guernica, you had to go to Madrid and see it in a museum or get a book. But it means that the whole artwork had to be so important, or at least important enough for someone to put it in a museum and for someone else to write a book about it. But now everyone's creativity is on display thanks to social media. Think about it and, and think about what it could be doing for female artists who are massively underrepresented in museums and galleries and for artists of color. Um, also, think, think about this from another angle. Take the top 3% in, uh, in the art market. The top 3% of artists are making money. Uh, these are all the established artists that you guys are covering. And then you have emerging artists and upcoming artists. They make some money. And then you have like 95 to 97% of the artists uh, even if the art world doesn't recognize them as artists officially, for whom there isn't even a name. And social media has given every artist a voice. And even if the volume of the megaphone, meaning their reach, is different for big artists and small ones. So you could say that social has democratized access to art and it has provided many opportunities for everyone. Yeah, that's a really great point. And so I'm curious, what kind of trends are you seeing for this kind of crowdsourcing? Do you think this is a trend that will become more prominent in the future and can maybe even become a significant revenue stream for artists? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that supporting artists directly is here to stay. Uh, in, the, in this trend uh, of going really direct to consumer, uh, this trend is part of a larger movement aiming to monetize the creator economy. Uh, you can look at NFT as one way to experiment with making money online. Um, you can look at Patreon. You can look at Buy Me a Coffee. And there's a lot uh, of stuff coming. And I think it, it is here to stay. I think it will turn from being a trend into being a necessity. Um, looking at all the people who are hustling just to be able to do what they love, which is true for many, many artists, in, 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 I believe that tech can stop that hustling or at least make it easier. So, yes, I absolutely think uh, it can become and it will become a significant revenue stream for, for artists. Uh, and I think that technology makes it easy to give back with everything from a dollar to a thousand dollars being possible within seconds. And so if you follow someone on social for a you know, month or a year or even years, why not reward them for, for their works? So uh, I would say crowdsourcing, contributions, tipping, this is all patronage 2.0. Everyone can support the arts. And um, I'm, I'm pretty convinced it's here to stay. Yeah, me too. It's really exciting. And so to give our listeners a little bit more context, can you share maybe an example or two of a success story you've already had actually on the Contribute2 platform? You know what? I can. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that we're having this conversation now um, after um, having had some, some artists go live and experiment with the tool. 
um, all artists that shared their cards in activated that networks uh, made made money on on contributor let's take uh, one italian artist silvia lelli uh, the official photographer at la scala in milan who used uh, contribute to as a way to fund a book project she received a five digit amount and was able to publish her book just this week and and if you had been there at the moment when silvia picked up a pile of freshly printed books you would have been like super excited as I was. Uh, she was able to self-publish a gorgeous book purely thanks to contributions from from fans in in her network, which is priceless. Um, there's another artist, Francesco Suave, uh, who is funding his travels and is working from Thailand, also supported by by contributions. And then we have um, other artists like Mimi Haddon, an American artist who generated contributions and turned them into an awesome video project, which she already completed. And, and so what, what's interesting is that um, several people that already used Contribute2 uh, managed to complete projects that they had in mind and are now be able to give back to the audience and, and talk about it and, and show the results of their work. So it's, that's pretty cool. And maybe to give you another uh, number, average contributions generated by artists on Contribute2 um, are at um, $3,000 roughly when they actively share their card with their supporters and personal networks. Uh, and so far, we have been able to pay out um, about $200,000 uh, to artists who um, used Contribute2 so far. Amazing. That's great to hear that you're already having some success stories on the platform. And so, Cosman, if our listeners want to learn more about Contribute2 or they want to get in touch, what's the best way for them to do that? They could definitely follow us on Instagram, um, Contribute2 on Instagram. And um, otherwise, they can also send me an email at uh, cosmin at contribute.to or um, follow me on, on Twitter, where I'm, I'm posting about all the, uh, the progress that we're making. Um, that's at Cosmo Ene. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we can do. And right now, we are, uh, maybe if I can talk to that for a second, uh, we, we had so much support from people like Nick Knight and Mario Testino and uh, established galleries and, and many other people in the art world that we decided to build the product that doesn't require an invitation because for now it was um, invitation only. Uh, and that new product will allow everybody to create a contributions link. And so we will open up the platform faster than anticipated, which is which makes me like super happy. So right now we are adding patrons to our network of matching partners. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited to, uh, to for us to also be able to help more artists and provide tools for them to um, help themselves. Perfect. Cosman, thanks so much again. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. We want to thank ArtBase for sponsoring this week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast. Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? Well, ArtBase is the right software to manage your art business. ArtBase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. All you do is enter your data once, and you use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and a bunch more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used in the cloud from any location on any device. So go to ArtBase.com now to learn more, and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount.